Welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank with Tennessee Tech University. And I'm Shan Stout with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Well, Shan, you know I love the music that we use for this podcast each week from our friend Andrew Buckner, but maybe this week we should have played Held of the Chief because we are talking to Tennessee Tech's student body president, Chance Hill. He's a junior from McMinnville, Tennessee, really an accomplished student with a passion for the purple and gold. Oh, definitely. It sure didn't take long to realize how he got elected. Um, He should have a future in politics for sure. I'd say that the Tennessee Tech Student Government Association is only the beginning for chance. Now, we also spoke with Tennessee Tech alumni and the official plant lady of Tennessee's college town, the lovely Emma Crabtree. And she is, of course, the owner of Glass Tangerine on the west side in downtown Cookville. Now, she has a fascinating story of how she went from being a mental health therapist to prioritizing her own mental health by chasing this dream that she'd held on to for more, many, many years. And I'd say that uh, she's now gone from people therapy to plant therapy. <laughs> she she has, although I, I would say she still does a lot for the community's mental health because I get an instant serotonin boost every time I walk in that store. <laughs> Agreed. I think our listeners are really going to enjoy both of these conversations today. So let's get started. Up first, our interview with Tennessee Tech Student Government Association President, Chance Hale. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by Tennessee Tech Student Government Association President, Chance Hale. Chance is a junior at Tech from McMinnville, Tennessee, and is majoring in finance. He was elected SGA president in April with 53% of the vote. He's also been an RA, a member of Tech's Association for Computing Machinery, and is the Chief Justice of the Tennessee Intercollegiate Supreme Court. Chance, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor to be a part of College Town Talk. I'm looking so forward to discussing my experiences and the exciting initiatives we're working on as a part of the Student Government Association. Well, we're looking forward to talking about all that as well, but you've had a really a busy start to the fall semester. You were the mace bearer at Freshman Convocation. You spoke at and were part of the planning for College Town Kickoff. Uh, that was the community event, the block party style event held in downtown Cookville at the beginning of the semester. I understand you even got to meet Sean Kingston, the, the headliner for that event. You also signed your first to bill into effect, and somewhere amid all of that, you have classes too. So what have been the highlights of your time as SGA president so far? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask me about the classes, <laughs> but that's a great question. Honestly, like you said, it's been super busy. Uh, this semester is off to a great start, and so I think it's kind of hard to narrow down what are my like favorite SGA experiences. However, I can like give you like my top four briefly. Uh, my One of my favorite things that I did this summer is I went to D.C. with a few members of my cabinet, and we had a really awesome time. I'll tell you about more about it in a second. And then um, I'd say the Mix and Mingle, College Town Kickoff, and obviously the SOAC FYI bill signing ceremony was super awesome. But starting kind of with the like D.C. trip and kind of talking about it, it wasn't necessarily like a SGA sponsored trip, but it was kind of like a little celebratory trip that me and my friends took after our election to celebrate and learn more about government and policy. Um, And uh, actually, in fact, some of my friends and I were actually able to meet with Congressman Rose, our representative here in Tennessee District 6. And it was truly an honor to get to meet him. And we enjoyed learning so much we could from him about politics and policy. And we tried to bring it all back here and take as much as we could from that experience. Um, Then speaking about the, the mix and mingle, That was absolutely probably one of my highlights. There's nothing more than I love than sunshine and getting outside and getting to talk to people. So I was definitely in my element there. And it was incredible getting to meet so many people at the Mix and Mingle and definitely rejuvenated my, you know, excitement for the year going into this. uh, The summer was, like you said, very long, the summer preparations for things to do. And I had like the Tennessee State Luncheon with Trey Hargett. And I had a lot of things to do over the summer. So it was nice to kickstart the year at the Mix and Mingle and get to meet with people and talk. And so I really enjoyed that. And then, yeah, Sean Kingston at the College Town Kickoff was super cool, too. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I don't, I don't mean to keep rambling here. But one thing that uh, I did want to talk about briefly was the um, SOAC and FYA bill signing ceremony. Uh, for those listeners that don't know what the SOAC is, it stands for the Student Organization Advisory Council. 
And I actually just signed it into law this past week. And from an SGA perspective, it's a really it was a really awesome event. I believe that many people enjoyed it that showed up and watched. And I hope that the student leaders at Tech are very excited about joining the SOAC. But from my personal perspective, the SOAC was the first bill that I ever signed. And so it was kind of a very humbling experience for me. And from the very earliest days of the campaign trail, I put so much blood, sweat, and tears into trying to make the SGA more representative of our student body. And I fundamentally believe that now that student orgs are going to have a seat at the table, hopefully they will be able to speak out on matters that impact them. And I hope that it makes our government more inclusive and better just overall. Well, Chance, I have to say, if there is another student that is making a better use of their experience at Tennessee Tech, they would be a fearsome person to behold. It's fair to say that you have a passion for all things TTU, and you previously talked about Tech's welcoming the atmosphere and how the moment you stepped foot on campus, you feel welcomed by students and faculty alike. But what made Tennessee Tech the right fit for you? Like, what would you want someone else who is considering enrolling at Tech to know? Absolutely. That's a wonderful question, Shan. Uh, first, let me just say, Tennessee Tech is home. I love our student body. I love our professors and everyone who makes this place so welcoming. As many people know, all those years ago when I was applying for college, which seems like a lifetime ago, I was actually planning on going somewhere else. However, one day before the Universal College deadline, my decision just didn't feel like the right one. I prayed to God, and I decided to change course and head here to Tennessee Tech. I believe what made my decision and what continues to be the reason that Tennessee Tech was the right fit for me is the spirit of our university. There's something about this place that just feels like home. While I know that my hometown, McMinnville, is just you know a few miles down the road in Warren County, um, but coming all the way from Warren County to White County to Putnam County, this small corner of the globe really made me who I am today. To anyone who is considering enrolling at Tech, I think you should ask yourself one question. Who are you and who do you want to be? Through Tennessee Tech, I got back to my roots and I rediscovered who I wanted to be. Tech challenged me to put myself out there, to seek opportunities, and to make some of the best friends anyone could ever ask for. If you're considering tech, I promise you, when you leave here, you will be bold, fearless, confident, and kind. Well, Chance, on behalf of the Office of Communications and Marketing at Tech, I, I don't think uh, we could have scripted a better answer. And um, I, I just appreciate that. I, I know that really is your uh, your perspective and, and your genuine take on it. And um, just uh, appreciate hearing that. Uh, now, Chance, you and I have had a chance to talk before uh, for a story on the university website, and you shared uh, really very poignantly about the inspiration you draw from your younger sister, Ansley, who lives with autism and cerebral palsy. Uh, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about the bond that you two share and what it was about her journey and experiences that led you to student government? Because I, I, I thought it was a really a compelling story when we last spoke. Absolutely, Jonathan. My little sister has been one of, if not the greatest inspiration in my life. My sister has faced numerous challenges in her life, and as her older brother, I've always tried to shield her from as much as I possibly could. However, my sister Ansley has taught me so much about life as well. Growing up on our family farm together, I witnessed firsthand her resilience and her compassion. My sister loves nothing more than riding around in a UTV on our farm, and her smile would honestly melt the coldest of hearts, in my humble opinion. But I believe the most important lesson that I've learned from my sister Ansley is advocacy. Um, back in the day, back growing up in high school and stuff, I focused very a lot on advocacy and, and FBLA involvement. And truly, I learned more from Ansley than I have in any professional setting ever. Um, it was honestly my sister's journey that has showed me that individuals, regardless of their abilities or disabilities, deserves respect, opportunities, and a voice. It was my sister Ansley's journey and experiences that led me to student government in the first place. I wanted to be a champion for those who face challenges and obstacles in life, just as she does. And I wanted to use my position and influence to advocate for inclusivity, accessibility, and equal opportunity for all students, including those with disabilities. In student government, I saw a platform to make meaningful impact on the lives of my peers and create a more inclusive and supportive environment at Tennessee Tech. And I guess that's why 
quite frankly, why I'm so passionate about the SOAC is I fundamentally believe that this new branch of our student government will allow everyone a seat at the table. I believe that this body will hopefully make tech more inclusive and will hopefully bring about positive change for everyone at Tennessee Tech. Well, that was a that was a beautiful and moving answer, and uh, you sound like a wonderful big brother. Now, Chance, you're a junior at Tech this year, which means your final year on campus is just around the corner. And I can tell from this interview that you are someone with big goals for yourself, just as you have big goals for the university. So tell us more about your future plans. I know that everyone, whether it's your family or anybody you meet on the street, when you're going to school, people want to know, so what, what are you going to do for your future? But one more time, Chance, uh, what, what is your future looking like? Thank you so much, Shannon. Absolutely. You, you could, I couldn't have said it better myself. It is definitely when you go to college, that's what's on everybody's mind is what comes next. What are you going to do? What is uh, the next 30 years look like for you? But um, I just want to take a moment and let me say that I fundamentally believe in the American dream. When I look around our campus, I see so many other people who believe in it too. For my fellow students striving to become doctors, engineers, and entrepreneurs, we are a university of dreamers. I've witnessed firsthand in my personal life the power in believing that you can change what you wish to. As the first member of my family to go to college, I'm a dreamer too. As my college experience comes to a close, my next steps are rooted in a desire to use my skills and my voice to continue fighting for my community and the people around me. I believe that attending law school is the next step in my journey to becoming a better speaker and a more effective advocate and a more decisive leader. My ultimate aspiration is to have the opportunity to represent the people I love, my hometown and my community. Whether that path leads me to become a state legislator a congressman, or any form of public servant, one thing is certain. I will never stop fighting for the people that I care about and that are around me. I want to pass legislation that will make the lives of people like my sister just a little bit easier. I'm excited about the journey ahead as I work towards making a positive impact in the world, one step at a time. Well, Chance, I, I know you talk about wanting to be a better speaker and advocate. Uh, I would say you're already pretty good at that, but uh, those those do sound like some great future plans. We like to end each podcast interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? That is such a great question because, honestly, I don't even know how words can describe it because Tennessee Tech has honestly helped me rediscover who I want to be, and it has helped me come closer to my roots in my hometown. Um, but I'd say one way that Tennessee Tech has profoundly impacted my life is by instilling a deep sense of community and the belief that every individual can have a lasting and positive influence. Our welcoming atmosphere and our inclusive atmosphere here on campus is where students can genuinely care about one another and learn more about things that are, they are passionate about and come together with their college experiences. Um, through my involvement in the SGA and other leadership roles, as you mentioned, I've always strived to try to get out there and put myself out there. And I believe that is honestly one of the best things that tech has done for me is it's given me access to opportunities and situations where otherwise wouldn't have had. It's given me access to be able to learn and grow and develop. And I believe that because of these experiences I've had, I'm much more confident now than I was three years ago when I started. And I, I, I truly believe that bold, fearless, confident kind. I know I say it like a broken record, but I do believe that is what our university is about. And I have witnessed firsthand, I know I use that a lot, but it's I feel so much more confident now than I was three years ago. And I love this university. I love the things that it's done and provided for me. And I think tech's just great all around. I'm going to agree with you on that, my friend. Uh, Chance Hill, the president of the Tennessee Tech Student Government Association. Thank you for being our guest on College Town Talk. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you for the College Town Talk here today. And for our listeners, you can learn more about Tennessee Tech Student Government Association by visiting tntech.edu forward slash SGA. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by one of my favorite people on earth. It is none other than Cookville's very own garden guru and floral fanatic, Tennessee Tech alumna and glass tangerine owner, the lovely Emma Crabtree. Now, her shop is located in the heart of Cookville's historic west side. 
The Glass Tangerine is Emma's vision brought to life. It's a plant shop and a mercantile, but it's so, so much more. Now at Glass Tangerine, visitors and locals will find an elegant, lovely curated space that offers nature, community, one of a kind finds to every person that walks through the door, which is oftentimes myself. From their build your own bouquets to their wide selection of house plants, including plenty of party options that the helpful staff can recommend for those of us with brown thumbs, to their selection of candles and gifts in the Instagram worthy decor, they also have lovely jewelry. Glass Tangerine has something for everyone. And we couldn't be happier to speak with the person who made this all possible for Cookville, Emma. Welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Now, Emma, it's been said that caring for plants and spending time in nature can be a form of therapy, but you actually spent eight years as a mental health therapist before you launched Glass Tangerine. Now, the way I understand it, the COVID-19 pandemic inspired you to make a massive career change as it did for so many people in your field. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So yes, I um, graduated from Tennessee Tech with my master's degree in 2014 and then entered the field of therapy. Um, and I was in the chair, as I like to say, for eight years. And then when COVID hit, I think that it just brought to life a lot of, um, I guess, some burnout that I was feeling. Um, the pandemic was really hard on everyone for a lot of different reasons, but I think for therapists, especially, you know, one of the reasons counseling works is because what you're going through, I'm not going through. And that was not the case with the pandemic. We were all going through it together. So I think that just kind of brought to my attention that I felt like I could participate in my community in a mental health space, but in my own way. And so Glass Tangerine is sort of this conglomeration of my desire to be in the public and bring something to a town that I love and have lived in for, gosh, almost 20 years now, um, while also still participating in the mental health space in my own way. And I think plants are exceptionally therapeutic for people. I think we saw that during COVID, you know, plant, house plant culture really took off. And that was what we saw on Instagram and people were collecting plants and I think it just brings a sense of peace to all of us to have a part of nature with us, whether it's in a big city or we live in a place like Cookville where we are surrounded by nature. There is such a therapeutic aspect to it. And, and I really wanted the shop to feel that way. Emma, one of the things that I love about Glass Tangerine is the beautiful space that you all inhabit. You're right in the middle of the action on Broad Street in the west side. Uh, you've got this vintage tin ceiling, uh, beautiful exposed brick walls that I know hold a lot of history. So can you tell us a little bit more about the space and how you made it a home? So my building was originally a pharmacy um, and it was Webb's Pharmacy. And then before I inhabited that space, it was um, Sports One, which was a sports memorabilia store on the west side. And then it, it did catch on fire. And Anna and Tyler Dunn, who owns Soulcraft Coffee, bought the building and they really poured everything they had into renovating the space, not just to make it functional again, um, but also to bring it back to life to what it was. They uncovered the original tile floors. They preserved as much of the ceiling as they could. Um, they cleaned the brick, all of those elements of keeping it original to the historic nature of the building. And so when I um, was able to rent the space from them, which I was really thankful I was able to do, my goal in designing the space was just to continue to elevate that early 1900s art deco style aesthetic. So I brought in a lot of elements of um, like I have bubble glass chandeliers and I'm playing off of the original tin ceiling and I have a lot of Baroque style floral patterns while also having a lot of um, clean lines and vintage feel to everything, whether that's the sink that I chose for the potting bench, which is a replica of a 1950s farmhouse to the way that we decided to display things in the shop with low lighting. Um, we do a lot of dark wood um, tones. 
So everything in this space was really designed to continue to elevate the historic nature of the building. Well, you have succeeded in the fact that you've created this beautiful space that is not just a great place to shop, but it has obviously inspired people. And now it's an environment where people want to spend their time. Now, you have become, I think, maybe accidentally a very popular event venue as well. You have hosted parties, baby showers, and I understand you even held a wedding inside the shop. Tell us more about the unique events that you've hosted. And do you have a favorite? Because I know that this past weekend you were selling clothes. Yeah, so um, that has definitely, the business has taken on a life of its own, um, which I love. I love, I feel like the community have has not only embraced the business, but they've also started to put their own spin on it. So we were approached to do a baby shower first by a friend of mine. And I was like, that's a really cool idea. Yeah, we can definitely do that. And then very quickly we were approached. Um, we've actually had two weddings in the shop now. Um, and they're both like micro weddings, um, no more than like 15 people at each. One was on New Year's Day. It was stunning and beautiful. And um, it's it's very much become this space where people have ideas just as much as we have ideas. And so if people bring us their ideas, we're like, yeah, we'll try it. And the clothing uh, pop up that we do is is I mean, it's probably my favorite. I love to host events and we've done baby showers, bridal showers. We've done two weddings. We've done um, engagement parties. We've done a lot of different things. But um, the clothing pop-up was actually Fiji's idea. And her and I are close friends. And she had just really encouraged me. She's like, I think you can do this. Like, I think that this could be really cool and you can do it your own way. And so we decided we wanted to try it, but we are not interested in selling clothes all of the time. So we have four pop-ups a year, one at each Equinox. And the clothing that we have is for that upcoming season. And it's all curated by hand by me and my manager, Aspen. And the idea is that everything works together. We call it Plant Lady Chic. You know, it's things that you can wear while you're gardening, things that you can wear when you're working around your house, things you can wear out to dinner. Um, just things that we would wear in the shop. The shirt I'm wearing right now while we're recording is from our fall collection. So, yeah, we're always open to trying new things and seeing what works. Some things have been really great. We've had a few failures and, you know, honestly, those are great, too. Well, Emma, we we love talking to other podcasters on this program. We recently spoke with Mayor Randy Porter, who shared with us about his podcast today in Putnam County. And you have a podcast as well. It's called A Podcast to Water Your Plants To. And we hope our listeners will check it out. I, it's it's funny. I know we've we've spoken to a couple of the same people, and I've listened to your podcast and thought, oh, I wish I would have thought to ask them that question. But um, can you tell us about the podcast? What made you decide to uh, venture into that space? I honestly don't know. Um, <laughs> it was kind of an idea that I had. I was cooking dinner one night, and I was in the mood to listen to a podcast. And I love anthropology the store I think they have a really cool business model the idea that they've been able to shift into a lifestyle brand and what that means and I thought wow that'd be really cool if they had a podcast that I could listen to about their journey as a business and they didn't and then I thought I could do that like I could have a podcast I professionally spoke to people for eight years I think I could see if I could make it work so I texted my manager and I was like hey do you want to be on a podcast and she was like what <laughs> And uh, we called up Luke Ramey, um, who owns the pod kitchen. And I had never met Luke before, but I was like, hey, I have an idea for a podcast. We met him the very next day and we all hit it off really well. So we thought we'll try a couple of episodes and see if it's something that we enjoy doing. We named it a podcast to water your plants, too, because we have a playlist, a master playlist for our store called songs to water your plants, too. So it's kind of a play on that. Um, there's always a personality behind every business and CG always says like people do business with people, not businesses. And so I felt like the podcast, while we're not still sure of its full identity yet, um, and we're letting it grow and evolve as it can. One thing that we're learning is that it's giving us a larger voice to be able to kind of talk very freely and vulnerably about what is it like to own a business and what does it mean when you fail big? And what does it mean when you have a good success? And we talk about those things on the podcast. And we're, we're really careful to not shy away from the uncomfortable conversations as much as the really fun conversations. So the podcast is, it's 
really enjoyable and I'm really excited to see where it goes next, like what it's full identity will be. Well, Emma, I'm a big fan of your podcast, along with all my staff here at the Visitors Bureau, and we have enjoyed your journey, uh, even the first day that you had your grand opening at your shop, to current day where you're doing pop-ups and all the great things. But we're going to end this interview today with the same question we ask all of our guests, and I'm real curious about your answer. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? I think it's very hard to answer this question of how did tech impact my life because I think it has impacted my life in so many ways. But I think the biggest way has been it brought me to Cookville. I moved here to go to school from Knoxville and I just fell in love with the town. I fell in love with the community. I fell in love with tech as a place. I even to this day graduating, you know, in 2010 when I'm on campus, it feels like home. I just, I love tech. I love campus. I love the culture there. Um, I worked at tech for a little while when I was in graduate school. I got my graduate degree from tech. So it brought me to Cookville and I've built a life here and I've built a home here and it's just a really special place for me. So I think having a really positive college experience was so important for me. And having a place that I felt really cared for and protected um, because I really did feel like the people at Tech, it's a small family style community. And that's exactly what I needed when I was 18 going into the world. So Tech has impacted me in a a lot of really great ways. But I think that that's the biggest. Well, we're certainly so glad it did. Emma, thank you so much for being our guest on College Town Talk today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. And for our listeners, be sure to visit Glass Tangerine at 44 West Broad Street in Cookville and find them online at glasstangerine.com. We want to thank Tennessee Tech SGA President Chance Hale and Tennessee Tech alum and Glass Tangerine owner Emma Crabtree for being our guest today. We do. And thanks to you all uh, for tuning in each week. By the way, if you are enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe, review, and share with your friends. Join us again next week for more conversations from right here in Cookville, Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.